Welcome back. It's 2024, and it's our first episode of this year of the Broker Club. Well, thank you so much for coming back, and thank you for um, for listening and paying attention. This show is dedicated to bring you a professional who is excellent at what they do, interesting people talking about important things. Today, my guest is... Wait a minute, what's going on here? It sounded like the ocean was coming in, didn't it? Yeah, you had some background noise. Yeah. Was... Um, uh, Larry Rideout, uh, so this show has two Larrys, no waiting, um, is the chairman and the founder of a fantastic firm here in New England, Gibson Sotheby's, uh, 17 plus years. And they are... Um, really consumer focused. Everybody knows that Gibson Sotheby's, they care, they they do uh, great work for their clients and their clientele. Um, but Gibson Sotheby's here under Larry Rideout's um, direction is also location driven. So they have locations from Cape Ann to Cape Cod. Um, how is that different? The that's a bricks and mortar, and there I know it comes with a cost. There's agencies out there now saying you don't need to go into the office. Talk to me, uh, Larry, about the difference between virtual offices versus bricks and mortar. Yes, we're uh, as you said, we're primarily a bricks and mortar company. Uh, it, it, it just has evolved that way. Our brand is kind of almost uh, needs that uh, recognition within the communities, and we've followed that. It's been successful for us, but to your point, it is, it's expensive. You know, it's not, the, the, uh, the option is, is not to have the bricks and mortar and, and that's, uh, less expensive, but I think it, you know, you have to weigh the, the pros and cons in terms right. of what the consumer might be interested in, in knowing about and seeing. And, and there's, as you said, there's brands out there that go strictly virtual. So there's plenty of comparisons. Uh, we're very comfortable with where we are and how we do it. You know, we don't just grow to grow. We follow, uh, the leads is how usually how I say it. If, right. if we see something happening in the marketplace and we continually are involved and we think we need a presence there, we'll we open there. It's kind of how yeah. it grew from three offices to twenty seven. Absolutely. One of one of the axioms of this industry is local, local, local. You know, uh, location, location, location. And there are people out there that believe that if you are not living in that community, you really can't help buy or sell. That's not as true as it used to be, but if you are on the ground and you know the neighborhood and you know what's going on and you're paying attention to that, you are a better source for that. It doesn't make you a better agent, but it makes you a better neighborhood source. Um, and I think that's one of the values of bricks and mortar in a town. Yeah, nope. it's, it definitely is. And, and as you said earlier, there's plenty of uh, businesses that don't do that. We all see where we end. Um, it, it, it will be interesting. I mean, in the end, Larry, what we're trying to do is serve a community. And that's about professionalism. And in in uh, um, any kind of professional organization or profession like ours, um, you have service uh, industry. You have a, a, a group. Um, ours is National Association of Realtors. Uh, mm -hmm. It. It's kind of a punchline, you know, what's the difference between a realtor and a, uh, an agent? And uh, people say, well, I don't know. But we in the industry know that we have a code of conduct. We have a code of ethics. And we, we can be tested on that and are often tested on that. Um, and so what's your thought about NAR, who's not had a great year for a couple of reasons? Yes. Uh, yeah, the... the uh... The concept of NAR, I think, is 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 very important for people that want to have professional real estate designations and, and that sort of thing. I, I was saying, I was in, in my mind, well, I'm in a bigger entity. I'm a big company, and I have a a brand that supports me. So a lot of times, I we're not needing all of the things that are offered by NAR. But the reality is, there's a lot of uh, real estate people out there that do need that, and and you need that trade industry. You need that trade uh, to to support you. Unfortunately, you know, this year there's been some missteps, and uh, my hope is that they can uh, regain their credibility because that's sure. really what's hurting right now is the credibility. 
I, I think there's a lot of heart in there and there's a lot of people that are going to try to get that done. We will have to wait and see how that comes out because yeah. there, you know, there's a credibility issue right now that they need to really uh, become transparent. They need to be uh, straightforward in the, in the mistakes they made, say what they made and, and fix them. Uh, and the other side of it is, the, and we'll talk in, probably later on in the commissions, they're involved in that too. So there's a lot of uh, negative uh, press out there right now and they, they're going to have to deal with that. It's, that's the problem. The upside or the good thing that I think I support the most is the, is the RPAC, is the support we get from uh, to to support the industry, to support the sellers, support buyers, support realtors. Uh, I well, think that's uh, the most critical piece. To let some of the audience who might not know what RPAC is, Realtor Property uh, Action Committee. And political action committee. Yes. Political action committee, and um, and what they do is they uh, lobby for the industry and for the homeowners um, to help them. And one of the great things that our PAC did during um, the pandemic is it got us paid as freelancers because that's exactly what we are. Um, and um, it in this state got us able to be out there meeting people with masks and all of that kind of stuff, but we were considered critical. And and that was our local political action committee, yeah. which is, again, GBAR, Greb, you know, they're all working for us to make a better a life yeah. for all of us. And uh, so we still need to support them, but we also have to hold them accountable. And that's, so there's a, it's a two-edged sword. As in everything, you know, yeah. it's it, you you work on what's best. I mean, the whole negotiation win-win is usually when uh, both sides give up something. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. quite often, yeah. and, and but you agree on that. You agree on what what you're doing and how you're doing it makes uh, makes a huge difference. Well, let's let's step on that third wheel about the commissions. Yes. As a professional, we're going to take it from the highest place first. Uh, a professional who has experience, um, uh, passed license exams, uh, continues to do something like that, is a professional that's worth paying. The process of buying and selling a property is not simple. There are legal issues, there are financial issues, there are zoning issues, there's a, a plethora of like uh, when you inspect a house, uh, what you see and what you know about what you see. Incredible amounts of information. Uh, an everyday realtor is supposed to know. They don't all. But if you're doing your job, you're worth the one, two, three, four percent that you're getting paid for your side. Now, the commission thing is about who gets paid and how they get paid. And it's it's confusing to the consumers, I think. How do you explain it, or how do you talk to your agents well, about this issue? We saw this, you know, this was coming up a year ago, two years ago. Yeah. We began educating our team that this is this is going to happen, and we need to be able to present the value of being representing a buyer. So yeah. we have we have a lot of uh, training going on for that in preparation for what I think will be ultimately the that we will have to do that. Uh, I, I think we've all done a poor job in letting the consumer know how hard we work and how much is involved. And, you know, I don't know quite how you fix that. I, we, we're trying to, in our presentations, we try to explain all the nuance of trying to close the deal. But, you know, our social media presence probably ruins that for us because we throw out there, just sold $3.9 million, you know, and it just, it almost looks so easy. So I, we have to figure out, all of us, how to make it, uh, make people understand that it's a hard job. It's not a simple job and all of the, you know that anyone that's watching this it's yeah. there's so many things you have to know and do and to get it to a transaction to close you know it's not something that you can i guess promulgate you don't put that out in, in the world and maybe we have to figure out how to be more clear and direct i think it's going to happen when we have to get the buyer to sign that to say we represent you they're going to have to talk about all of those things and that'll be a good thing for us ultimately because transparency is always a good thing it's just it's painful, you know, you make an adjustment, you gotta make the change. Yeah, yeah, and and communication is one of the things we, we talk to offline about what makes a good agent. I mean, and, and smilingly, we, we say there's a hundred things, you know, not a, you don't have to be, uh, uh, always be closing guy, uh, an extrovert. You can be quite a shy person and still be able to serve your clients in a, in a way because not everybody wants somebody yakking at them all the time. They just, you know, there's different 
uh, types and uh, it's a big industry and um, and you're worth you're you're worth uh, a commission. Now, yes. how much commission? That's negotiated. Nothing yeah. gets determined beforehand. You negotiate your your pay, and um, uh, and even though it shows up in the MLS, which is a transparent thing, hey, five percent on, on average in the, in our area, five percent, two and a half is going to the, the other side, um, listing agent, sale agent, right. and um, so that's a transparency that there's going to be 5% of this commission is going to be divvied up between the two professionals that are doing the work for the four or plus clients on the, doing the buying and selling. Um, that's, be, uh, you know, everyone works so hard on their listing presentation. Well, now you have to work hard on your buyer representation presentation. It has to be just the same. You have to be able to explain what you do, how you do it, and why you do it. And then yeah. people sign and, and commit to you which is a will be a big commitment and, and in the end i think it'll be a good thing but it is going to be it'll be a challenge in the beginning well the reality is in these commissions uh, correct me uh, if i'm wrong uh uh that the commission is really split between the buyer and the seller and it's and it's divvied out at the uh at the closing table that if a five percent is agreed upon then the seller agrees that, okay, 5% is going to come out. That's who the person who sold, who is selling it. They're saying, okay, uh, 5% of, of this can be, but the person who's buying the house is buying the full thing, which also includes that same 5%. Yeah, but what's gonna happen if this goes through is the seller will still have the right to determine how much the buyer agent is gonna receive. So exactly. that's where the, that's where the exactly. presentation and the, and the ability to negotiate will come to to the front. You're going to have to be able to negotiate because because they're not going to be, it's not necessarily going to be a 50%. I hope it always is. You know, I think that's the fair yeah. way, but the seller is going to have the right to, to make that decision. And that's where you have to deal with it. Right. Well, you know, um, you know put it in medical things. I mean, you, you have the right to pay your doctor, but if the doctor has a consult, guess what? That guy's getting paid too, or that doctor's getting paid as well. You know, so that gets determined. Again, I think the waters have been muddied with these lawsuits. And I've always said a day without a lawyer is usually a pretty good day. <laughs> but uh, I don't have any lawyer relatives, so I can say that. Uh -huh. Well, you know, and, and we talked a little bit about that. I think we were misrepresented uh, in that lawsuit. I mean, when, when a jury makes a decision in two hours, uh, something was amiss. And I and I'm I was disappointed in that, and now it's opened up the, you know across the country. Everybody's using the same uh, defense, I guess, for lack of a better word. And yeah, we all have to deal with it now. But it, it was it should have been handled on that front end. I think, yeah, I it was. that was that was a drop ball by NAR, NAR. and um, we're picking up the pieces. But as an agent, as a good agent, you need to be able to communicate what's going on with right. it, your clients. And um, one of the things I think make a good agent is somebody who has a teacher's mind. How can I help you understand what you right. don't understand? Rather than telling people, I mean, we all have our plans and our programs. Um, uh, one of the things I heard years ago, and it's always kind of stuck with me, is you can go in with your canned presentation. Remember when everybody had their canned presentation? About an hour. Here's, yeah. we're the best agency. We're the best agents. And we're the, you know, and here you go. And they were pretty canned. If you had somebody from uh, the same agent from the same brand and they were make a presentation to a person, they often had the same stuff because it was a, it was a template. Yeah. And I, I used to go in with that on a CD. Remember when we had CDs and put them in, you know, um, and uh, and then I would go in with that and said, would you like to watch this canned hour talking about, you know, how good I am, how good my agency is and all that? Or can I start with this piece of paper that has 20 questions? Let me ask you questions about what you want to do and how everybody picked. Let's do the questions. That's right. That's right. No, because you, unless you know what they want, we have all kinds of skills and, and it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a tutor or if it's a Gothic, you know, we're going to know about the building, the construction and something like that. Um, 
you need to be armed with that information, I think. You do. As you said, it's a, everyone has to have their own story. I think that's really what it is. You know, it isn't a canned presentation any longer. People, you have to find out their needs and match their needs. It's like reading the room. You got to read the room and, and react to whatever you're hearing. And that's the, the, uh, the value that they want to see. Yeah. I apologize. I live on this beautiful pond called Horn Pond. And the sun is pouring in on me right now, and I don't. I, 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 I see it in a little bit. We'll have to get. Uh, we'll have to finish before it hits your eyes. Exactly. <laughs> you look okay here, though. You look great as always. Um, uh, but you bring you bring up a good point about uh, the personal story, and your personal story includes a lot of um, community service. You've been very. Uh, important in the libraries in yeah. Europe for many, many years. And um, another thing that makes a good agent is study and reading, and not just in your field about real estate, but other ways, neuro-linguistic programming, or uh, there's this great book uh, written by a former uh, FBI negotiator uh, called Never Split the Difference. And, and that is an excellent way to get to through someone's objections. Um, and these are fantastic books to read, but what, what has made you so interested in working with the libraries over many, many years? You know, it, libraries aren't just about books anymore. And that's kind of, when, when, we, uh, when I took that on, I was in the foundation, we, were, we had a, we have a, an historic library, uh, a Richardson Library much yeah. like the Trinity Church in, in Boston. Yeah. And it was uh, it falling to disrepair. But the, the biggest challenge we had was getting into the community and, and see, let, letting them know that this shouldn't be happening. And, mm -hmm. you know, everyone has a phone. They'd show me a phone and say, there's where my books are. I don't need a library. So yeah. we went on a campaign to, to talk to all the community. We went to every civic organization, every community, and, and just revisited the power of a, of a library. And the library is a community center not just a library. People that don't have computers can go in there and use computers. People that want to be in a quiet place can go in and just and get themselves refreshed. So my belief in the library, I love the books and I grew up with books, but the reality was I, I saw a need for the community. And guess what, for real estate, it's not a bad thing to have a, a library as your focal point in the middle of the city. And really with Woburn, I think it's been a, a huge plus in terms of people wanting to now Get into the city, of, the city of Woburn, because of the the uh, the investment we made it was twenty eight million dollars to wow. uh, refurbish that that library, and uh, now I'm a trustee, so I'm no longer in the foundation, so I don't have to work as hard, but I get to meet once a month now. But it, it's a it's a big part of what I think is important in a real estate person's life is to get involved in their community, right. because now you've got credibility with people that say, okay, I want to work with this person. They're you know they're giving back. They're not just taking. And I think wow. that piece is probably the most important piece for anyone out there. And I want to I, I want to agree completely and reiterate that if you're an agent, one of the ways to be better at being an agent is um, to be involved in your community. You know, stop with the Zillow leads and start talking to your neighbors. Uh, I, I, I don't want to bash Zillow um, um, unless we're off the air. Uh, okay. <laughs> We can have a we can have our own conversation. Right, right. Well, uh, to me, that's another nar blunder. It was many years ago when Realtor.com didn't do with, you know, owned by nar at that point. Didn't do what Zillow then went on and did, and you know, owned our lunch for yeah, with, uh, with the data that they had as well. You know, nar yeah. had the data. Yeah, yeah. Well, like you said, that's a conversation for another day. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but community community outreach, community involvement is is very essential. So let's let's talk just for a few a uh, few minutes about what makes a great agent. Well, you know, we just started right there. A, a great agent is involved in their community. A great agent is is visible in their community. Uh, and you know, I have I'm the, I have the good fortune of having markets in every. I have an urban presence, I have a suburban presence, I have a second home presence. Everyone has to do it differently. Like obviously in the urban market, it's not as uh, easy to be out there in the community as it is in a suburban community. But 
the people that uh, are good agents, they they make it work. It, it, you know, we, we just were talking offline that my top, I think my top 20 people, I was just looking at the numbers, probably all had their best year ever this year. And this year was a tough year. It's a yeah. tough year for everyone. And, yeah. and it's just because they never stopped doing what they were supposed to do every day. The market doesn't change what they do. And yeah. I think if everybody just would stay focused on that, you know, hold yourself accountable. Uh, accountability. Yeah, accountability. accountability is huge because, you, you know, it's, we were talking when I used to train, when I was a manager, I'd, I'd say to my new agents, we're in, in an industry where you have to, when you get up in the morning, you're unemployed. You have to go find a job. So in my mind, it's like you have to always wake up every day thinking about how you're going to impact the community, how you're going to help a client and customer, and how you're going to feed your family, because right. that's probably the most important part right. of the whole thing. Yeah. Consistency, another big and important word. Yeah. Get up and do your work. Chop your wood. Do yeah. your job, as they say here in New England. And that's you know, in the past few years, there's so many great coaches out there now. You know, if you need to be held accountable and you have a hard time holding yourself accountable, Spend some money on yourself and get a coach and, and have someone that you're going to have to check in with and tell them what you did this week until you feel like you can do it yourself. Because that's the piece that's most important. You have to get up and go to work every day. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, and pay attention to what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, the whole thing about planning, you know, uh, uh, fa failing to plan is planning to fail or something like, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, just be accountable, be consistent, uh, be communicating, be community centered. Um, uh, answer your phone. How about that? Yeah. Answer your yeah. phone. What a concept. Well, you yeah. know, concept. Answer your phone. Or if you can't, because sometimes you're on the phone, like my phone just rang, I'm talking to you. Uh, call people back. Let them know that you're going to call them back. It's you the know? basics, isn't it? In the end, at the end of the day, your relation, this is a relationship building uh, business. So, you know, utilize your relationships and experienced people know that they have a book of business that they, they sold many, many people homes and, and, and listen, that's the people in a, in a market like this that you reach out to. You know, I, I heard a speaker say one time in real estate, we don't sell homes, we sell knowledge. And if we would just think about it from that perspective, there's people that are wondering what's going on here, just like we are. And wouldn't it be nice if you reached out to in a warm handoff way, Talk to people about the industry and the business. And, oh, by the way, you know, anybody that might be interested in my services. Yeah. Uh, for new people, it's almost, it's a little harder because they don't have that book of business. They don't have that history. But right. you know, they, can, they can get a mentor uh, in an office. They could join a team. I just yeah. had a, a gentleman that was in the business probably five years. And, and he was, he had plateaued. He wasn't getting where he wanted to be. So we talked and I saw something in him that I said, this, you know, this guy could really be good if he, if we get the right direction. I, I got him on one of my teams and he had the best year he's ever had, you know, because sometimes you just need to figure out what do I have to do to make that happen? And it may take two or three times to figure it out, but don't stop. Don't quit. Right. right. As I was still chopping my own wood today, I was thinking about how different the communication is now than it was when I started out, you know, um, and it always continually changes. I mean, social media wasn't the big thing there. Now you have to have a social media presence. So that brings up brand. You know, uh, Gibson Sotheby's is a fantastic brand, but each agent uh, it, it does uh, their own part within them. I'm a Gibson Sotheby agent, but I'm the one that's going to answer your calls. I'm the one that's going to get you the most or or get you the house for the least, whatever your whatever you feel they create a brand within a brand it's really what they do and we help them do that you know we're not afraid to have them have a brand right I mean, we have a brand that can support them right i have um in fact she's coming on again uh, a woman named paige arnoff fenn uh she owns a company called mavens and moguls she's one of the lead brand um creators in the country and her company is um, uh, and she's done this for many, many, comp many years. She told me years ago, the way to understand your own personal brand is to go out and interview 10 people, three people who are family who know you, uh, uh, four people that you've worked with and the rest of well, that's three, that's seven. So three people who, um, are, uh, you pay. So your doctor, your, you know, 
um, uh, stylist, hairstylist, what, whatever that is, and ask them a question. Give me three characteristics that you think represent who I am. And, and don't give them any other information, you know, and you might think of yourself as smart or funny or, or hardworking, but they came back with, you listen well, you know, uh, uh, you, you always understood what I needed and you, you helped me. So when you get those 30 things back, you do a, a, a look at it and, you know, the top ones are what people are seeing you as. Right. Think about that and think about how, you know, be what people think think of you as, you know, rather that's than- your brand, that's your brand, exactly. That's the brand. And I think brand is really important yeah. now. And I think people don't always think about that when they're out there in social media, you know, when you're mixing your, you know, uh, good times with your professional times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it's true. Sometimes you have to, you know, if they're a friend, you have to kind of call them in and say, hey, come on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's all kinds of mistakes. Yeah. Um, Larry, what, what is a question that I haven't asked you that you'd like to answer you think the audience would love to hear? Oh, boy, that's a tough one. I caught me, you're catching me off guard with that. I don't, uh, what would they like to hear? I don't well, know. I, I know that you have spoken, you know, over the years on countless numbers of, of issues. You have a big family. I know family is important to you. Um, the industry continues to change. Um, social media and internet and connectivity continues to change. Now, you know, now we can sign our contracts on our phone. Uh, right, right. That saves some driving time. Um, we did, yeah. We used to have to go from attorney to attorney, if you recall. That right. been a long time. So, <laughs> well, let's I, let's finish up then with AI. You know, yeah. Uh, okay, that's great. That's a real strength of mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> something again. And it's you, like the, it's like I the commission know. issue. You're gonna have to you have to embrace that. It's yeah. happening. You know. Yeah. So yeah. You all have to, I, I've tried. I'm, I'm I'm dabbling in it. I think in a year or so I'll have more of a sense of it, but. It's it's coming and it's there and yeah. people are already using it so yeah you, know, you have to figure that out and when the old timers talk about the blue book people yeah. say what what yeah, blue, blue book you know yeah. won't even know no no it's you know our 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 business is changing every day now it's just it's an evolution it's moving so quickly yeah. I think it's a good thing I think we'll all be more professional because of it yeah. but we also have to embrace these things and not be try to hang on to what we had, the blue book. You know, the blue book doesn't exist anymore. We have to do something else. Yeah, now everybody has information. Now you can't, when you price something, you can't be way out of line because they got Zillow and they got Realtor, they got all these other, uh, uh, Redfin does it. Uh, they have calculators, like we think it's worth this much. Yep. Now you have to know how to explain that to to a, a seller who says, but Zillow says it's worth, you know, another hundred thousand dollars more than you say. And you have to explain to them what their algorithm is all about and how that house that's nothing like yours right next door sold for a million dollars, but you're not. So that's affecting your, you know, how it's value you in valuing you. Yes. And there's a nuance, more nuance. You know, we, we have yeah. to we have to somehow communicate that all the work and effort we put in is yeah. worth it. You know, we just have to figure that out. Larry, we could go on and on. Uh, I really enjoy this. Larry, right out of Gibson Sotheby's, it's such a pleasure to have you join us. Um, and thank you so much for everything you've shared. Thank you for joining me here on Horn Pond. You got a little taste of the sun sunset anyway. Wow, that music is loud, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's... Next week, we have uh, HR on off from Mavis and Lowell's talking about brands. Thanks so much for, for being here, and thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for having me.